let's do it so welcome to my channel i never actually thought i'd be one of these youtube people you know just like out here doing my thing talking what not talking to a camera and by myself into this room and just really just letting my thoughts out in the air i actually have a youtube channel and the name of the youtube channel is TWO, the whistling orangutan. I am the whistling orangutan. Can I whistle? No, I am terrible at it. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. So this is my channel. So what's this channel about? My chair is creaky. I need a new chair. I also need a mic. I'm practically shouting just to make sure that you guys can hear me. But you guys have to do things step by step. Slowly but surely. And what's the purpose of this channel? There is no purpose really. Basically, I've always had a couple of ideas in my head that I just always wanted to like get out. You know, like I'm always talking shit, um, <laughs> mainly in my head. And it's like, I just want to get some of this stuff out. And I was like, you know what? If I don't have the audience in terms of people to talk to, I might as well do it for myself. I put it on YouTube, I put it on the internet. Maybe it goes well, maybe it flops. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that I'm doing something. And I think I'm gonna enjoy this, even if it flops. That's not the point. The point is, I wanna talk, I wanna talk smack. I got things in my head and I just need to get them out. I don't have any content for this week. This is just my first post, I wanted to get it out there. But I do I do wanna actually talk about like what happened to me this week. Um, so this week I actually had a surgery. Um, I, had a, I had a lipoma. Um, the reason I'm saying I had a lipoma is because it was removed. Now, I had never heard of a lipoma, but basically, let me tell you what happened. So, a lipoma is basically a buildup of, of uh, fat, fatty tissue that can form anywhere in your body. They're usually benign, um, which means, <laughs> you know, it's not like cancerous or anything like this. But the reason I'm laughing is not because of the word benign, but <laughs> when I was at the... <laughs> When I was at the hospital, the nurse was like, hey, you have a big mean tumor. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. Um, anyways, it's a lump of, it's, a, it's a basically a buildup of fatty tissue that they try to remove out of your body. There's generally no, there's no cure for it and it's either you manage it, or you keep it with you throughout your life or you remove it. And I chose to remove it. Actually, it's not that I just chose to remove it, it was on my doctor's, um, doctor's opinion. So he said, you need to remove this thing. Now, um, how long had I had this thing for? So I had it for like uh, like almost four or five months. Um, like, I, you know, I, I was sitting, I, I was, you know, I'm obviously at my place. So we started working from home um, through the company that I work for. And then um, I didn't have like, I didn't have like a, like a proper desk set up like what I have now. I used to have just, I used to have these bar stools and they're over there, but yeah, I'm by myself, so I can't really just pick up the camera and turn over there. And anyways, it's a bar stool. And what happened was I, my back started to feel like really, really sore. Um, and I started to do, and I got this like lump thing. I thought stupidly that it was like a muscle, a muscle knot because, you know, I've been sitting in a very funny position. So, you know, I was like, okay, maybe this is not so great. I need to get an office set up, etc. So I've got an office set up, but around like April, April, yeah, April. Oh, by the way, we're in 2020, so this is the year of the virus. Um, so in about April, I think it was. Um, so then I, I'm recording this on the 31st of October. Halloween! Anyway, um, so I got this lump on my back, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, uh, maybe it was caused by the chair. In my mind, I thought it was a knot, like a muscle knot, because, you know, it was kind of like bumpy, and you kind of like could feel it, but it was like kind of tiny. So I left it there. I did nothing about it. Got my office set up. My back stopped feeling sore. But you know, this thing never went away. And it actually got a little bigger and bigger and bigger. But you know, black man, hospitals, doctor, hey, I just left it. Um, did nothing about it. Um, and it just got, kept getting a little bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, um, long story short, basically, um, someone that I knew felt it and they were like, yo, what is that? You know, maybe you should get it checked out. So I asked my parents to have a look and feel about it because my parents are uh, work in the medical profession and they were like, yo, this thing might be a lipoma. You need to get this thing checked out. So then I went to the, um, yo, he charged me 1,200 Rand to see me for like five minutes. And I was like, wow. 
why did I not become a doctor instead of doing what I'm doing? 1,200 rand for five, five minutes. Anyways, so I went to the general surgeon. He fills up my back. He fills me up for like five minutes. Yeah, I know. I know. I said he fills me up for five minutes. He's like, yo, buddy, you've got a lipoma. Um, I suggest that we remove this thing. Let's get it out of your body. So I was like, okay, let's do it. And dude, literally, I saw this guy on a uh, Tuesday. He set up the procedure for the following Wednesday. It's like this past week Wednesday. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Let's get this thing out of my body. All right, cool. So um, we go to the hospital. Oh, when I say we, I mean I go to the hospital. You know, you know, I'm gonna get you know this thing removed out of me. So I get to the hospital. Um, first of all, I'm not, I'm not going to mention any specifics because, you know, I don't want to expose anyone or make anyone, you know, feel any type of way because who knows who's going to see this. But anyways, go to the hospital and it's the day of admission. It's, it's, a, it's the Wednesday. I'm going to get checked in. First of all, I get checked in by this, I, I don't know, like, how, how do I describe this? How do I describe this guy? The most fabulous man I have ever seen. Like, this guy had his nails, manicure shine peacock um like he's like wearing this like ironed dress shirt looking thing like i've never had a shirt that's been ironed that spectacularly he was wearing i think it was like a forty thousand rand watch or something like that i was just like dude how are you like sitting behind this counter clearly you are a kept man but anyways dude was very nice to me you know I get, told me what I had to do. I filled out all my forms. I went into the place and went into the 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 the, uh, <laughs> the ward. I walked down to the ward. I was there, and uh, the nurses, you know, welcomed me in. They were like, "Hey, how you doing?" And there was a vendor nurse. Oh, by the way, I'm vendor. And there was a vendor nurse, and everything was all good. And there were other nurses there, and they, you know, they let me in. They were like, "Yo, uh, you need to get out of your clothes and get into this hospital gear." Now, I don't know if you've ever been to hospital, if you've ever been operated on. It was my first time, so it was my first experience, but you know, they put you in that hospital gear. I'd only ever seen this hospital gear, to be honest, on TV shows. Never seen it anywhere else, really. I've never really actually ever been sick. This is my first time that was actually, you know, like I was actually having a medical procedure done. So, you know, I put on this thing, and then the lady goes to me, uh, Sir, you need to put on the hospital pentine. What? The hospital panty. Now, I don't know, maybe you're from another country, but um, I'm not making a mistake when I say panty. Yeah, that's the black way of saying panty. Yeah, the, they gave me a, 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 a panty. And um, I, I hate to say this, but it was really comfortable. Like, wow, like, you know, that thing is like, you know, it's like really loose and you know it's all like light and it's like really feels good on your skin you know like i actually wanted to ask if i could get recommendations for where i could like you know buy that stuff from but i chickened out but anyways so they put on i, I get on the i get on the gown thing i put on the panty and um you know and i, you know, I just wait they, so it's around quarter to eight and then they come and get me Whew, my heart it is beating I've never, you know, I mean, this is surgery. I mean, it's not a, it's not a major surgery. It's not like I'm getting brain sur surgery, but for me, it's major. I've never, I've never, I've never been through surgery before. So anyways, they will me into the thing. And you know, like when you watch hospital shows and the always show you like the, the, the view from like the patient who's in the bed and you're looking up and you just see the lights. Yo, that is like really accurate. Like you're lying there on the bed and this, you just literally see all the lights, you know, you know above you. Go, 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 go. Like, okay, cool. Um, so shout out to all the hospital shows. That's very accurate. So I get in the thing. Uh, they wheel me into the, 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 the ward. Um, sorry, not the ward, the, the, the theater. The theater where I'm going to get, you know, operated on. And it's me, the patient. It's the anesthetist, the drug lady. And there's a nurse. And there's uh, two other people in there. Um, these people basically did not acknowledge me, except for the drug lady, because she had to do things to me. Everybody else couldn't give a rat's ass about me being in the room. But what was interesting is that, yo, these guys talk shit about people in there. I swear 
on my left nipple, the one guy says to the other lady, he goes, yo, at least this time we've got someone who's a decent weight. Last time I had a man who was 103 years old, but don't worry. Next time I'm going to get the next shift back because there's a 270 kilogram man lined up. And I was like, say what? 270 kilograms. Anyway, I was like, this is how they talk about us. Are they going to talk about me when I'm down? Are they going to talk? I think I've got freckles on my butt. Are they going to talk about the freckles on my butt? Anyway, drug lady is like, yo, focus on me. I'm like, yes, drug lady. She goes, yeah, okay, cool. Oh, by the way, the like homos on my back. So she's like, on my right, on the right hand side of my back. So she's like, um, I'm gonna uh, put uh, the injection in here. Uh, sorry, the drip, not the injection. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the drip in here. I want you to know that this is probably gonna be the most painful part or the most uncomfortable part of your surgery. Um, I'm like, okay. She, so she does the thing, you know. She puts the drip in. Like, I'm a dude. I'm a man. So I'm just like, I didn't flinch. Nothing. Like, what's a drip? Anyway, she puts the drip in me, you know, so I'm lying there on my left hand. So I'm lying flat on my back. And then she goes, okay, we're going to give you some oxygen. So we're also going to put like an air pipe down your lungs to help you breathe. But don't worry, we'll only do this when you're under. So when you wake up, you'll actually feel a little bit, uh, you'll feel like your throat is scratchy because of this thing we're putting down. But we won't put it in now. We'll put it in once you're under. I'm like, all right, cool, drug lady. I'm good to go. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but the, as the drip was in me this whole time, I didn't really know that the drugs had already started their thing on me. So she just says to me, listen, I just want you, they bring the oxygen, they're like, I just want you to breathe the oxygen in. So I'm like, okay, cool. In my mind, I'm like, I'm probably gonna stay awake, right? For a while, I'm like taking it all in, I'm looking at all the lights in the ward. So now I take my first breath. She says, she says just keep deep, breathing deeply, I'm like, all right, cool. That's breath number two. Keep breathing deeply, you're fine. And I take breath number three. The next time I opened my eyes, they were taking me back to the ward. Two hours of my life, oops, sorry. Two hours of my life, gone. I don't know what happened. You could have done anything to me at that moment. It's just the last thing I remember is breathing in the third time and the next thing I'm being taken to my ward and I'm like, Wait, what? We're finished? Like, like that? Just like that? Like, yo, surgery is the weirdest thing ever. I swear on my soul, on my left nipple, it feels like I was literally down for one second and the next thing I know I'm being wheeled in. So I'm still healing up now, so I'm good. Um, but the, the, just to cut, I mean, I've been talking, but just to cut the story short, the last thing I, <laughs> the last thing that happened from my little hospital experience this week. So, um, the, the day, I mean, it was a day surgery. I don't want to make it seem like I was in hospital for weeks or anything like that. So I went in, got my thing left <laughs> around eight o'clock that evening. I got home around four o'clock around eight o'clock that evening. I get a text, um, I get a text uh, and it's a number I don't know. So I check, I mean, I look at the text, it's a WhatsApp actually. So I look at the WhatsApp and you know and it, you know it's written in like half english half half chibanda right and 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 it's, and it's that nurse from from early on <laughs> and she's like yo i just wanted to find out how you're doing um and how the surgery went and i'm like yo i definitely look good in a hospital painting <laughs> Anyways, that's my first post. Let's see how this goes.